Okay, uh, I'd like to bring this meeting to order. And this is a hearing of the Committee of Adjustment for the Town of Pelham. Everyone present will be given an opportunity to comment on the applications being heard. Please address your comments and questions through the chair. This public meeting has been called to satisfy requirements of the Planning Act and Council bylaws. Notice of this meeting has been given by prepaid first class mail to all persons listed as owners in the last revised assessment role within 60 meters of the subject properties. In addition, a public notice sign has been posted on the lands. Agencies commenting on applications may request that certain conditions be imposed should the application be approved. Voicing objections to these conditions will not adversely affect the committee's decision. The purpose of the application and relative correspondence will be heard, following which the applicant will be given the opportunity to address the application. Any person concerned with the application will then be given an opportunity to speak. Please state your name and mailing address for the record. At the conclusion of the discussion, the committee will render a decision and advise of any applicable conditions. Specific wording for conditions will be determined by the committee following the public portion of this hearing. All interested parties are invited to be present. <clears throat> Copies of the decisions will be mailed to the applicant or agent and to any other person who files a written request. There are colored forms for this purpose which are available on the back table. Any person, corporation, or public body has the right to appeal either the decision itself or the conditions of consent to the local appeal body within 20 days of the decision for minor variance and within 20 days of the mailing of the decision for consent applications. I'd like to introduce our hearing panel. On my far left is Don Cook. On my left is Jonathan Claussen. I'm chairing Wayne Lockie. And our secretary clerk is Nancy Pizzano. She'll be doing all the work today. Does any member of the panel have a pecuniary interest in accordance with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act in any of the applications to be considered at this hearing? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. No, Mr. Chairman. And I have none. Are there any requests for withdrawal or adjournment? None that I'm aware of, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Um, the first one that I would like to call our is file A8218P, Daniel and Melanie Thompson. If you would care to come up to the table here and state your name and address. Uh, no, you can have a seat and a mic. Yep, any of those. Do you want to state your name and address? Clayton Hartwell, 201 Dorchester uh, Road, St. Catharines, Ontario. Thank you. Mr. Hartwell is the authorized agent. Okay. So with regard to this file, the subject land is located on the corner of three public streets, Camborough Road, Cream Street, and Memorial Drive, and no municipally is 495 Camborough Road. The subject land is zoned Agricultural 137A 137 in accordance with the town's zoning bylaw 1136-1987 as amended. The minor variance seeks, up, uh, seeks relief from section 7.4C for maximum lot coverage to permit 18% lot coverage, whereas 10% is allowed. The variance will facilitate construction of a one-story westerly dwelling addition. To date, comments have been received from um, Public Works offering no objection or comments. Uh, the building department requests that all necessary permits be obtained prior to construction. Fire Department has no concerns or comments, and um, public comments, we did not receive any com comments from the public. The town is in receipt of written confirmation of septic approval for this proposal. A minor variance is weighed on four tests in accordance with the Planning Act. The Planning Department has reported on those four tests as it uh, pertains to planning policies. The first test is the variance minor in nature. The proposed overall lot coverage will be larger than the existing A zone requirement of 
Considering the small parcel size, the variance can be accommodated with minimal impact subject to final approved septic permit. Adequate amenity area and open space for the septic purposes remains available for the residents even with the exceedance of overall lot coverage. The next test is the variance desirable for the development of the land. The planning department reports exceeding the maximum allowable lot coverage is desirable for the use of the land because it will enable the construction of a dwelling addition which will improve the living space and enhance the property value. The third test, does the variance maintain the general intent of the official plan? The planning department reports increasing the maximum overall lot coverage to 18% maintains the general intent of the official plan because the use of the property as a residential dwelling and the ability to farm the surrounding agricultural land is not being impacted due to the existing site enclosure of public roadways and facilities. The variance is appropriate given the site's rural context and meets the general intent of the town's official plan. Finally, does the variance maintain the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw? Increasing the maximum overall lot coverage to 18% maintains the general intent of the zoning bylaw insofar as sufficient amounts of open space, amenity area and land for private services remain on the property. Planning staff is of the opinion that the application meets the four minor variance tests laid out in the Planning Act. The application is consistent with provincial policies, the regional official plan and conforms to the general intent of the town's official plan and zoning bylaw. Also, the heritage permit approval has been given by Council for the proposed building addition. The authorization of the minor variances is not expected to generate negative impacts for adjacent uses or the community at large, so consequently planning staff recommend that the application A-2018 be approved, subject to the condition that all necessary building permits be obtained prior to construction commencing. Mr. Chair, that's all the correspondence related to this file. Thank you very much, Nancy. Um, do you wish to make any comments or? No. No. No, not at all. Anybody on the committee, any comments or questions? Discussion? Anybody in the audience wants to comment on this? If not, um, I'd be ready for. Mr. Chairman, I'll move that uh, file A828. 2018 P Daniel and Melanie Thompson the application be granted which is applica uh, application is to uh, increase lot coverage to 18% whereas 10% is is uh, currently in the zoning bylaw uh, the decision is based on the following reasons the variance is minor in nature in that adequate amenities area and open space for septic purposes remain available uh, the general purpose and intent of the zoning bylaw is maintained. And thirdly, that the intent of the official plan is maintained and there are no impacts uh, due to the existing site because of the existing roadways surrounding it and existing uses. Fourthly, the proposal is desirable for appropriate development. Fifthly, the application is granted without prejudice to any other application of the Town of Pelham. Uh, further, there were no objections received from commenting agencies or budding property owners. And we, the Committee of Adjustment, have considered written and oral comments and agree that the minor variance report analysis and recommendation that this application meets the Planning Act for minor variance test. Uh, the, uh, the application will be approved subject to condition that all necessary building permits must be obtained prior to any further construction commencing to the satisfaction of the Town of Pelham Chief Building Official. Okay. Thank you. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll motion. second that. Thank you. Any comments? No comments? All in favor? Motion is passed. You're granted. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. The next application that we will hear is file A9218P, David Judge and Debbie Judge. If you'd care to come up to the uh, hot seat and grab a mic and. <clears throat> I think you can probably hear me anyways. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, state your name and address, please. My record. name is David Judge. Uh, address is 524 Roland Road, uh, mm -hmm. R01 Ridgeville. Thank you. Nancy, do you want to? Certainly, Mr. Chair. This is application A9-2018. 
The subject land is located on the south side of Roland Road, lying west of Centre Street, being part of Lot 10, Concession 3, and known municipally as 524 Roland Road in the town of Pelham. The subject land is owned Agricultural A in accordance with Pelham Zoning Bylaw 1136-1987 as amended. The minor variance application requests relief from Section 7.7A Maximum Accessory Lot Coverage to allow 1.5% lot coverage for accessory structures whereas 1% is permitted and from Section 7.7D Maximum Accessory Building Height to allow a maximum accessory building height of 6.5 metres whereas 3.7 metres is allowed. The proposal is for the removal of an existing utility shed and construction of a one-story accessory building. To date, uh, Public Works offered no objection or comment. The Building Department is requesting all necessary permits to be obtained prior to construction commencing. The Fire Department had no concerns or comments, nor did the Region of Niagara, and there were no public comments received on this application. Back to the four tests under the Planning Act is the variance minor in nature. The proposed accessory lot coverage of 1.5% is minor overall despite the parcel size and the variance can be accommodated with minimal impact. Increasing the accessory building height to 6.5 meters is minor given the rural context and the structure is oriented in a way which ensures it appears secondary to the primary dwelling being located in the rear yard. No negative impacts are anticipated by the adjacent neighbors as good, a good distance buffers the surrounding uses from a slightly taller structure. With regard to desirability, the proposed accessory lot coverage of 1.5% is desirable for the use of the land given the parcel size. The relief will offer some more flexibility in terms of property usage and thus desirability. The variance request to increase the accessory building height is desirable for the property because it will allow for an enhanced storage of personal belongings. The adjacent dwelling to the west is set back over 50 metres and has no adverse impacts uh, anticipated on adjacent lands. The next test is does the variance maintain the general intent and purpose of the official plan. The proposed accessory lot coverage maintains the general intent of the official plan in that no negative impacts would be created for any natural heritage feature or, on, or neighboring properties. The proposed use of the building accessory to a single detached house is permitted in the specialty agricultural designation of the official plan and the policy does permit uses which are compatible with agriculture. The increase of accessory building height will not compromise the objective of the official plan. So the variance is appropriate given the site's rural context and it meets the general intent of the town's official plan policies. The final test is the variance maintain the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. Increasing the maximum accessory building lot coverage maintains the general intent of the zoning bylaw in that adequate open space remains and will not bother the existing septic field and stormwater runoff uh, will be required to be contained on the property as per town standards. The size of the proposed accessory building's height to 6.5 meters is appropriate given the rural context and still ensures that the dwelling is maintained as the main use of the land. An ample amount of open space is available on the site, thus the increased lot coverage and height will not adversely impact the rural residential nature of the lot or the surrounding countryside. The variances maintain the intent of the zoning bylaw with respect to accessory building massing, siting and lot coverage. Planning staff is of the opinion that the application meets the four tests laid out in the Planning Act for a minor variance and the application is consistent with provincial policies, the regional official plan and conforms to the general intent of the town's official plan and zoning bylaw. The authorization of the minor variances is not expected to generate negative impacts for adjacent uses or for the community at large. Consequently, planning staff recommend that the application, file A9 of 2018-P, be approved subject to the following conditions, that all necessary um, building permits be obtained prior to construction commencing and that the demolition permit for the existing accessory building also be obtained. Mr. Chair, that is all the correspondence on this file. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have any comments? I have a couple of comments. <clears throat> I think the zoning um, rules need to be reviewed. This 1%, frankly, is crazy. If you lived in a subdivision in Font Hill, let's, let's say your, your lot was 50 by 120. That's 6,000 square feet. You're allowed to build up to a 100 square foot shed without even getting a building permit, let alone committee of adjustment. Now, 100, what's that, about 1.6, 1 and 2 thirds percent. So why is it 1% in a rural area? It doesn't make any sense. My other comment is, <clears throat> is not particularly this committee or anything, but I reckon the region's review, I paid somebody about $800 an hour for what they did. It was $400 <clears throat> to look and see, yes, in 1997, you put in a new tile bed as required when I did modifications to the house, and it doesn't have any impact. There's lots of land to put another one in, which was a requirement at the time when the raised tile bed was built. 
I'm 44 meters from it. I can't reckon how it took any more than half an hour to review that and write a letter, and it's $400. It, it's offensive. And the region will hear about it from me, frankly. <laughs> it's, I know it's not you guys, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> we, we're just here to enforce Yeah. The, <laughs> the other question I have, really, um, what's the purpose of a demolition permit? <clears throat> it's a new one to me. I've never heard of it. Uh, it's been around for a while, hasn't it, Nancy? Oh, probably has. Through you, Mr. Chair, a demolition permit is uh, required by the Town mm -hmm. of Pelham. Um, it's standard across the province under the Ontario Building Code. Um, Why? Uh, I don't that, understand. That like, I understand a, building permits. and That would be and, a question for the chief building official. Yeah, maybe I'm I'll sorry, ask him. I don't have I'm, I'm curious. I mean, it's a little bit academic because I got a feeling when I take things out of the building, it'll fall down on its own. <laughs> yeah. It, it is standard, and it's not unique to Pelham. It is under the building code, and uh, it's it's the same across the province. I'll ask him because it, it puzzles me, because the only issue I can see is construction safety, and that's uh, Ontario Ministry of Labor and the Construction Safety Act. Yeah. What, Mr. Chairman, one of the problems I think we've seen in the past is some of the old rural homes, they'll be knocked down, and really what we're, we are worried about is the safety of the lot because of the well, or the existing septic tank. Okay. So that that's that's sense. one of the reasons the that's, demolition. That's so enough. somebody has to go actually out and inspect and make sure that the cistern's been filled in and the and the septic tank has been filled in. So that's okay. Oh, that makes some sense. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Does uh, anybody in the audience have any comments? Anybody on the panel have any comments? Questions? Anything at all? If not, I'd be ready for a motion. I move that we uh, grant the uh, minor variance for uh, lot coverage and building height because the uh, one, the variance is minor in nature. There won't be any negative in, uh, impacts. I mean, when you look at the line there, Gen uh, to the general purpose and the intent of bylaws maintained because there's, they have lots of pace, uh, space around them. Three different Tent official plan is maintained, but there's no negative impact uh, anticipated. Four, the proposal is desirable for appropriate development and use of the land because the release will offer more flexibility and no adverse impacts. And five, the application uh, granted without prejudice to any other application in the town of Pelham. Six, there were nobody objected. There were no comments for anybody. Seven, the committee adjusted. We considered written and oral and, and comments and agree that the mi there's a minor variance report analysis and recommended that the analysis meets the Planning Act test for minor variance. And the only conditions are that uh, you get a, a demolition permit and a building permit, all the per permits you need uh, from the powers to be at the building department. And from what I gather, they don't need a uh, uh, well, if they do need it for sewage or anything, that'll all be taken care of when they get the building permit. I have a second or that motion. I'll Thank second you. that, Mr. Chairman. All in favor? Thank you. You're granted. Thank you. And uh, I guess I'd suggest you write to the region or yeah. your uh, political parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about the right time to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> With regard to the zoning bylaw, it is under review right now. Well, you need to review that, and the height one as well. Okay, if you look at that height and you put a three to one roof slope on it, and you have an eight foot sidewall, I don't think you can have a building more than about 24 feet wide. Mm -hmm. like, it doesn't make any sense either. All of the bring components, it up in the, yeah. but, you know, All the components are under review. Yeah, they, All need, they need to because yes. it's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, any. Um, Applications of consent, none. Minutes of approval. I thought there was some. There is one set of the minutes, minutes from approval. neighbors. Yeah, I saw there. Yeah. Yep. What Nancy sent on the. Uh... So it's May 1st? Yep. Minutes? And do I have a motion for approval of those minutes? Chairman, I'll move that the committee minutes of May 1st um, be approved as prepared. And I'll second that. Thank you very much. All in favor? In favor? Done. Got to do some adjournment. You got to do some signing. Signing first. Before you can leave. So Part of the job.
Oh, motion for adjournment. We adjourn before we do all of our work. The signing, yeah. You can adjourn before you sign. Okay. We're adjourned. Well, nice. Uh, second it. There was a motion by. Yeah, by Don.